Welcome to Egypt, commonly referred to as the mother of the world and the gift of the Nile. I'm speaking to you from Cairo, known as the city of a thousand minarets. Population, 22 million. When you first arrive to the city, you'll likely notice a few things right away. The traffic. Coffee first arrived to Egypt in the 16th century and quickly grew in popularity, with coffee houses springing up on every corner. These coffee houses became akin to social clubs, allowing people to gather in public spaces simply to drink coffee and converse. For a short period of time, coffee was believed to be dangerous and as intoxicating as wine, and the government, fearing the nature of the discussions people were engaged in at the cafes, attempted to ban coffee houses. This was during the Ottoman period, when there was political unrest in Middle Eastern countries which were attempting to gain independent power. Hence, authorities felt threatened by the social gatherings. Fortunately, after great opposition from the public, the ruling was overturned. As the popularity of coffee shops increased, they expanded to different neighborhoods and became the ideal place where people could spend their time. The increase in coffee houses in the city also led to urban migration because of the job opportunities that became available. Now, one can find a local coffee shops, known as Ahwa Baladi, all over the country, seemingly on every corner. Some of these cafes have truly stood the test of time, such as the cafe El Fishawi, found in the famous Khan Khalili market here in Cairo. El Fishawi is a 240-year-old establishment which was opened in 1773, when a man, known only by his last name, El Fishawi, began serving coffee to his friends each evening after prayers. Today, whether it is in winter or summer, whether you find yourself in a small village in the south or a large city in the north, you will find people sitting outside, drinking coffee or tea, smoking shisha, and socializing. People might be playing games such as taula, or what many in the west know as backgammon, dominoes or cards. Perhaps they're eating or smoking shisha, but everyone is sipping some tea or Turkish coffee. It is very much a part of the culture here, and I love it. So, let's go check out a local cafe and see what the coffee culture in Egypt is like today. Alright guys, so I'm here at a local cafe in downtown Cairo, or Ahwa as they are called. <laughs> <laughs> and Ahwa actually just means coffee in Arabic, but it is the term they use for these coffee shops. Salam alaikum. Can you buy some Can you buy some Do you have He ran away when he saw the camera. Um, I'm a little bit careful about filming in areas since not everyone wants to be on camera. But yeah, so I'm at a local Ahwa here, and you can just walk up and sit down if you see an open space. Um, I'll film really briefly, hopefully no one minds. So yeah, at a, at a little local Ahwa, find a spot, someone will come and take your order. If they're really busy, maybe you'll have to like flag them down, but you can order Tea or coffee is very typical. Um, tea is shea, and if you want that with sugar, they'll bring a side of sugar out typically with the tea. And 
coffee is Turkish coffee here. So if you order a coffee, it's going to be Turkish coffee, which... Standard. Standard, yes. It's the standard coffee here in, in Egypt. And there's several ways to get it. Actually, can you explain this for me? Because... I always get, I like sugar in my drinks, so I always get aqua zieda, which is coffee with a lot of sugar. A lot of sugar, yeah. Yeah, so tell me like the different ways that... Just different, okay, so the coffee powder itself, it, there are a lot of flavors, so sometimes like it's plain, sometimes it comes with, you know, the... the uh, cardamom. Cardamom. Uh-huh. Uh, and some other flavor. But the most common one is sedan, the one that's... Sedan. And also it's different, like the white, the dark one. Yeah. That's the powder. But they're basically just going to bring you whatever. If you say ahwa, they're bringing you whatever coffee they have on hand. To be honest, yes. Most yeah. of the coffees, yes. Just yeah. say ahwa. I okay. never get complicated or specific with my coffee ordering. I'm just saying ahwa, it's going to be a Turkish coffee. And then what amount of sugar do you want in it? Yes, exactly. That's true. <laughs> so, like, how you say, like, uh, there are three or four, like, uh, names levels. or levels, yeah, of, of sugar. sugar. <laughs> so, if you drink Ziada, Ziada is like um, the most, uh, right? The most. <laughs> I have the most sugar. Oops. Yes. But what if, if you want like no sugar? Let me just explain Turkish coffee really quickly. Turkish coffee is like finely ground uh, coffee beans. Like it's, it's like espresso, but different. Um, mainly in the fact that the grinds of the coffee are very fine, even more so than espresso. And with espresso, they don't leave the grinds in there. But with Turkish coffee, you will find the grinds at the bottom. So heads up, do not finish that Turkish coffee at the very bottom. You're going to have a sludge. Don't drink that, of course. There's a, it depends on the, on the place, but it might be this much, it might be this much. But once it's getting very thick, don't drink that. That is not for drinking. Um, but if you're ordering and you want no sugar, what do we call that? Uh, seda. 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 Blink. Okay, ahwa seda. Seda. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's different than zieda. Uh, yeah. Which is the most. <laughs> yeah, and then like light sugar? Uh, light sugar is ariha, which I drink. Okay. So ariha is like, uh, yeah, just a little bit. Uh-huh. Uh, sugar. And then mazbut. Mazbut is like middle sugar? The medium. Yeah, thing. yeah. Yes. Normal. Uh, that's it. And also there are different And then zieda like is what I get, which is tons of sugar. Ahwa exactly. zieda. <laughs> so you have those four different levels of ordering and... Uh, what else? Uh, nothing else. Some people like they drink uh, mano. Uh, it actually comes with a little bit like more sugar than uh, mosku. Okay. So, so there's an even middle ground between what yeah. I get and, and the... there's also Fransawi. <laughs> Fransawi means French. Uh, uh, French, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So this uh, comes with milk. So like. Uh, I rarely see that, but I have seen it, and I have met it at my apartment before. By the way, guys, I will be making a Turkish coffee back at my apartment at the end of this video, so stick around for that if you are curious on how to make. <laughs> You're gonna film it for me, but yeah, I'm gonna uh, show you how to make Turkish coffee because I know a lot of people maybe have not had it. I don't think I've ever had Turkish coffee until I came to Egypt, so I'll, I'll show you guys how to make that. But yeah, don't drink the sludge at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else? I, I uh, for coming to a coffee shop or aqua, um, they always put down like a bottle of water or two, you know, depending on the amount of people. Um, because the Turkish coffee is very thick, it is good to have some water with it. But if you have your own water, you know, you don't need to pay for it, but they might charge you. So just be aware of that. They always bring out this water. They are charging for it. And if you're not drinking it, make sure that they're not charging you for it. Because I know I have paid for it in the past and I thought it was a very expensive coffee. <laughs> oh, here, speak of the coffee. Shokra. <laughs> okay, so yes, you have his coffee, less sugar, me, lots of sugar, <laughs> and I usually let it sit for a little bit just to cool down um, because it's quite hot, <clears throat> but yeah, we're going to also order some shisha. 
expensive than outside of downtown and, or in more local areas so for example I don't even know how much this costs yet but how would you how much would you say that this one would be 20 you think it's gonna be 20 okay so like uh, you know one coffee 20 pounds if you were outside of downtown though how much would that cost uh, go to like the lowest that it might cost the lowest I think uh, seven eight yeah, seven or eight at the moment, you know, with inflation and all of that. So, um, and tea is always obviously cheap as well. How much would a tea it's be? Like in the, the lowest is four pounds. Uh huh. And downtown, well, how much would you say? Ten. Ten. Ten for a tea. So yeah, it varies in price up and down, but in that range. So just a heads up on that downtown. Like most places around the world, like central districts, central downtown areas are a little bit more expensive. Um, but yeah, so the shisha, I'm gonna have him <laughs> explain it more as we as we get it. I I mean I smoke cigarettes, he smokes cigarettes, so I don't smoke shisha all that often to be honest. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I smoke the fruit one. Yeah, yeah, sure, it's great for you. <laughs> um, for those of you who don't know, shisha it is a water pipe and it is tobacco with a small amount of nicotine and they smoke it out of the water pipe um, with charcoal. That's pretty much it. I'm sure most of you guys know. It's also called hookah or uh, various names around the world. But however you know it as, it is uh, very popular here. I don't actually like the regular tobacco flavored shisha very much, <laughs> but it looks way cooler. Um, the, the water pipe that they have it in is metallic and if you get the fruit shisha, they're gonna serve it with like a little plastic tube. It feels more like for a kid, like a little kazoo or something. Yeah, that's, I'll show you like when we get shisha, but this is important because like the normal, um, this tube. Yeah. So like you didn't get the normal one because it would be mixed with the normal tobacco. Yeah. But you want to get uh, a different, like a new one, yeah. so like the flavor doesn't mix up. Right, right. right. So, yes. So yeah, the, the standard uh, water pipe or hookah, whatever you want to call it, if you're just smoking the regular tobacco, it's going to be the, the metal one and it's because the flavor is always remaining the same, but if you're getting different fruit flavors, obviously it's going to taint or change the flavor, so they're giving you a... a one-time use plastic tube and so yeah but I always feel like a kid smoking that like out of a little plastic tube versus the adult looking <laughs> water pipe um, but yeah there's a lot of different flavors and I do enjoy the fruit flavors a, a lot more so anyways all right well let's wait for that to arrive and check back later oh another thing to mention is that you guys are able to bring your own food in here so a lot of people will grab something from a takeaway restaurant and bring it to a cafe in fact I just did that the other day when I was showing some vegan and vegetarian foods um, for a video that I'm in the process of making so you can grab some takeaway food from anywhere bring it into a, a cafe sit down order a tea or a juice sometimes you know tea and coffee are always standard but sometimes you have fresh juices you might have like lemon mint or mango juice sugar cane juice sometimes it really depends on the place of course but it's they usually will offer that right like yeah. some kind of juice it's not always just coffee and tea no, no. 
especially like in downtown, like they all they have all kind of uh, drinks, mm -hmm. so cold, hot. They have everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, but yeah, feel free to bring in your own food. It's not rude. It's acceptable to do that. Okay, we're trying to order shisha now, so he's trying to gather, get this man's attention. So uh, this is just like a, uh, it's like a rock, just just a rock. Mm -hmm. And here you put the tobacco under here, and here is the coal, like fire. Yeah, yeah, the coal. Yeah. So this tobacco is a mix of some things. So uh, the tobacco itself and black honey. They have black honey in it. What? Really? Yeah. And also they bought sometimes the... Is that standard always? Black yeah, honey? Yeah. No way. No, really. I did not know that. <laughs> <laughs> no, they bought black honey and also sometimes they bought wood, like piece of wood. You know? um, but anyways, yeah, it's uh, majorly just tobacco and honey. Okay. Yeah, so I'm just like the coal, fire it up. Mm -hmm. What is just, this piece called? This piece, the whole piece, this Mapsa. 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 Okay. Yeah, okay. So, it's two pieces actually. It should be all this stick. It's supposed to be like no leakage from here up to here. Mm -hmm. So, you make sure like it's tight. And also, they give you this piece of plastic. So it's kind of like a... Sanitary. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it's actually spread out in Egypt, uh, especially downtown after COVID. Mm -hmm. So they get this piece just to make sure like you're not smoking or using the same Mapsa. Yeah. Like that makes a difference. Uh. <laughs> yeah. it makes a difference. Sometimes. I mean, no, 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 I agree. At least the mouthpiece, you know, you don't have someone else's like saliva. Yeah. So, okay. So we have the, the Hagar. And 
tobacco with some nicotine and apparently honey. News to me. I did not know that. <laughs> and then the coal to burn it on top. Cool. Just make sure like once you put the fire, you have to smoke. Just you don't want to get like cool. Yes, you have to keep smoking it occasionally to keep it burning, of course. And I've seen some of the guys start it for you if you're not familiar with smoking shisha. Yeah, we start it. Oh. Try to. If you don't have like this piece of plastic, you just do it from here. Ah, oh. yeah, just really? Fired up. Uh huh. Make sure. If you have the piece of plastic, just do it from here. It's All right. Like, and then like this lasts for like 10, 15 minutes, depends on like the size of the the hugger itself. This yeah. One, I think. And then, like, if you want to change, you ask the guy, shisha guy, to change it for you. Yeah. Like, you change like, the whole thing. Oh, that's a good question. So, how much is, like, one bowl of the tobacco? So, depends, you know, the price varies. Yeah. Uh, but Give it, me a ballpark it, price for the regular tobacco flavor. Between 10 and 20. Between 10 and 20. But most common in downtown, 10. Mm -hmm. 10 pounds per pocket. Okay. And usually the fruit, the fruit is more expensive, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's like a lot more expensive? Yeah, like at least twice or three times the normal one. I'm a fancy lady <laughs> with my plastic tube. <laughs> yeah, so they yeah, will. 25 or something. Huh? 25 for Falek, for oh. fruit. Uh huh. 25, 30. Okay, that's a big difference. Um, one suggestion, um, anywhere in Egypt when you're about to order something, ask about the price beforehand because you might be overcharged, especially as a foreigner. So when you're ordering something, whether it's a coffee or shisha or a lot of things, ask the price just so you can be informed of beforehand what you are paying. And they will refill it without you asking sometimes, right? The good shisha guy will do that. Yeah, the good shisha guy will yeah. refill it without you asking, but be aware that every time they are refilling it, you are paying for it again. Oh, come on, choke it on. <laughs> the fruit has arrived. <laughs> Okay, so this is what I was talking about guys with the little plastic. You gotta break this top off. There it goes to the ground. I'll pick that up later. Um, let's get that going. flavor that I got. How do you say apple again? Tofe. Eh? Tofe. Tofe. I don't know all my fruits in Arabic yet. I know manga and a few other ones, but tofe. Yes, so not the cool <laughs> the adult one I have, that little kazoo. <laughs> but I do enjoy the flavor more of the uh, flavors so <clears throat> First time you smoke shisha, if you are like a smoker, like a, you smoke cigarette. First time you smoke shisha, you will cough. I'm sure like first time you smoke shisha, you coughed a little bit. Mm. Because it's different, like uh, the amount of smoke is different as a lot. Yeah. And sometimes like for a beginners, <coughs> like it burns your throat a little bit. Interesting that you mentioned that because I was actually looking up some stuff about shisha. Um, before making this video and apparently because the smoking sessions are longer than a cigarette if you're like um if you're a cigarette smoker maybe it lasts like five minutes but when you're smoking shisha it can last 10 to 15 minutes and it ends up being a lot more tobacco and nicotine in the long run, especially if you're smoking shisha a lot. There's a lot more stats on that that I can't remember at the moment, but it is 
a lot of tobacco and a lot of shisha over time if you're doing it fairly often. So be aware of that. Not healthy. Oh. <laughs> to be honest, side note, as something else I read just about Kaido. Um, and pollution, it's the, the air pollution here is equivalent to smoking about a pack of cigarettes a day. Something I read. Can't verify that, but it might be true. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, the shisha, you have the fruit, you have the, the tobacco, and it, it will cause you to cough. I, I've smoked cigarettes for a long time, but shisha, Especially if you're deeply inhaling, and it does go deeper into your lungs because of it being a water pipe. Um, <laughs> can be more damaging. It is. Come on. <laughs> I shouldn't quote quote. Yeah, it's yeah. Ten times worse than a cigarette. Oh dang! Oh, so you know that? Yeah. Oh come on! Come, on, no. <laughs> come to Egypt to smoke some shisha. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> is that all the cafe scenes that I have shown in this video are at night um, but this culture and the aquas are during the day as well especially for workers right so uh, people here like the shops they uh, they start the day by it they go to okay so they wake up dress up then they go before they go to work, they sit on a cafe, they bring their food from school cart or whatever, bring their food, they eat on a coffee shop, and then they smoke shisha or order coffee, and then start their day. And then some people also, after they finish their day, they go to a coffee shop and smoke shisha and drink coffee, then go home. My dad was doing that, so... Uh, yeah, it's like Very awesome. typical. <laughs> Very typical. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, people are doing this all day long. Um, I feel like the uh, aqua is like more active at night. The temperature is cooler, especially in summer. So I have been filming just night scenes because I think it is better for filming for me when it's not so hot. But this is all day long. People are doing this. It's just busier at night typically. Um, but like he said, people are going in the morning and they're smoking shisha and bringing their food from the food carts with the tamaya carts. Street uh, vendors eating and, and then going to work. So this is an all-day, 24/7 event essentially. Uh, but I'm just showing night scenes because of the temperature and the fact that it's usually livelier at night. So yeah, downtown specifically, it's more lively at night. It's the, the night life here in Cairo. Yeah, Basically, yeah. Right? People come to downtown to, to walk around, to shop, to socialize. People watch and sit at the cafes. Uh, yeah, he was. <laughs> so, all right. So that is Aqua. Oh, he's a kitty cat. <laughs> so, like I said, guys, <laughs> once you get to Egypt, you're going to notice the traffic, the cats, and the cafes. Thank you so much for following along. Let's go back to my apartment to see how to make Turkish coffee. And I did show a clip of this Al Fashawi Cafe in Khara Khalili, which is quite famous because it is very old, 240 years old. If you are interested in me making a more detailed video about that, leave a comment in this video and I will make a video about that as well. But yeah, let's go find out how to make Turkish coffee. Okay, so back at my apartment, and this is what you're going to need to make Turkish coffee. You're going to need Turkish coffee, some water, a little pot, and some sugar if you like sugar. So what we have here, the pot, Turkish coffee, little glass, and some sugar, and some cold water. As I mentioned, it is a Turkish coffee. So very finely ground, just like espresso, but more so. As you can see, it's like a powder. 
so this is what I have, but any type of Turkish coffee is fine. You will need the little pot. Uh, in Turkish it is Shevzve, Shevzve? Yeah, Shevzve, I think. Uh, here in Egypt they call it Kanaka. And so you'll need a little pot like this. A little glass for the finished product <laughs> and some sugar if you like to add sugar and cold water so for the Turkish coffee I'm gonna have one maybe two I'm kind of doing a heaping spoonful but not too much so that I can get it into my little uh, kanaka here and then some sugar. I do like zieda, lots of sugar, so I'm putting one and maybe even two. Ah, it's a lot of sugar, I know. <laughs> and then cold water. Fill the glass up first so that you can know how much it's going to fit in once it's done. So um, I actually usually just fill it up from the sink, but if you have cold water, that is supposed to be the way that you are doing it, so. Pour it in straight in there. So you have the sugar, the Turkish coffee, and the water all here. And then you need to mix it, shake it up. Steal your hands over it as much as possible. And you can see it's still quite thick in there. So I'm going to give it another go. Okay, and that is a bit more blended or mixed up. And so now that you have it mixed up, just take it to your stove to get it boiling. Okay, so I'm not sure what kind of stove top you have, but try to find the smallest burner. I have a very large one and I'm using the small one here. Turn it down to the lowest heat where it's barely on and set your little chesve or kanaka on the heat and leave it for a few minutes max you know it actually boils up quite quickly so you want to keep an eye on it don't just walk away and think you can <laughs> go read a book or something watch a movie because it boils up within a few minutes and I have forgotten about it a lot and a lot of people do even Egyptians say they, they walk away and then they come back and it's boiling over <laughs> so stick around keep an eye on it uh, I'll check back in just a moment. All right, so as we can see, it is boiling up just a little bit. I usually do like to tap it just to get it to set a little bit more before it comes fully boiling and it's ready. And that is how to make Turkish coffee. So thank you so much for watching you guys. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe so that I can reach more people with the channel. And check out my other videos. There's a lot more videos I have about Egypt. But thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your support. And I will catch you guys on the next one.
Thank you.